Okay, so let's have a chat about purchasing leads through Zillow. Welcome to the channel. My name is Sammy Fryer, licensed realtor in the state of South Carolina, and I did do a trial run of Zillow leads for eight months, and I got mixed reviews. And so in this video, I'm gonna tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and everything that you should expect and be aware of going into an investment to purchase Zillow leads. Okay, so as a brand new agent, I did understand that I have a need to generate leads. I need somewhere to start. And I had a call with one of their salespeople and I was interested in what they had to say. And after looking at the numbers, I felt like there was a plan that I could enter into that made sense for me. And so let me just start there and I'm gonna tell you the good. Now, first is just the raw numbers. So I paid for eight months of Zillow leads and my rate was $200 a month. And in that $200 a month, eight month period, totaling $1,600, I brought in a total of $12,375 before my commission split. Three deals that came through Zillow leads. And so as far as my ROI goes, my return on investment, then for $1,600 over an eight month period, I fared pretty well, even after my commission split, I still I'm in the green. So I did well. So that's a positive. And another positive I will say is that when they, if you're, if you've already looked at this program and you're considering it, or if you are about to go look at it, then you have seen, or you will see that they have an estimate of the leads that they're going to be able to generate for you monthly based on the price point and market that you're entering into. So my return on investment was positive and Zillow did deliver on those estimated leads. And so another thing about those leads that I would say is positive is that these leads come directly to your phone and you know that they are house shopping because they're on Zillow. So you already know that these leads are people that are looking or that have some kind of interest in purchasing a home or land. And so the last positive that I can say about the Zillow leads is that if you can't afford it, and that's an innuendo into where we're about to go on the negative sides, then you can actually secure a large chunk of the buyer leads in your market. And if you can afford it, then you can actually use this tool or use this program to secure those buyer leads or that large chunk of you know, income and buyer inquiries, therefore leads and obviously hopefully close deals in the top market segments in your area. All right. Now that's a great segue to the negatives. So just to recap, my ROI was pretty good. I mean, it was, I, I returned on my investment. So for $1,600 before commission split, I had over $12,000. They delivered on the leads. The estimate of leads that I was told I would receive, I received, I can say that. And at the price point that I could afford, I was able to dominate, completely buy out an entire zip code. And so that was also a big factor in yielding those results for me. Now, there's all kinds of nuance to the things that I just said that are negative. So let's dive into some of the little fine print that comes along with everything that I just said, because this is the stuff that you really need to know and understand. So the first thing is the obvious one that you're going to hear about if you look at multiple videos or you already have on this subject. These leads are actually extremely expensive. And so if you are a new agent, most likely you are trying to get established and generate traffic and generate revenue. And so you don't already have a giant pile of money sitting somewhere. You're not already bringing in a ton of money. You're not already doing a whole lot of sales volume. That's why you're trying to purchase leads from Zillow. And that means that you have a limited income. Your budget is going to be tight as far as what you can invest. In my area, the top zip codes that I serve were either A, already all bought out and I didn't have access, period. But even if I did, to buy out the largest share of the voice would have been ridiculously expensive and completely out of my budget by a long shot. And we're talking about thousands of dollars a month, thousands of dollars a month. So there's no way that if I could afford that, I wouldn't need the leads to begin with, honestly. And so what I had to do was I had to find a peripheral market and I found one that still has activity, but with a uh, the, the city limits in that neighboring county, but the particular city that I bought out 
is 34,000 people less than my market. And my market's only a market of 40,000 people within the city limits. So you can imagine how small this town was or is. And I bought it out completely because there wasn't a lot invested there. Well, there's a reason for that. Median prices are extremely low and there's, there's all kinds of things that I could say that come along with that. But I'll just say that I was able for $200 a month to actually buy out the largest share of the voice in that area. And that worked out for me in terms of my return on investment. But there's, there's some negative that came along with that. I'm just going to tell you that I'd be willing to bet the, the profit that I made doing this that if you end up in a situation like mine where you absolutely cannot afford to get any reasonable share that's going to be worth it potentially in your preferred markets, you're going to have to go to a peripheral market to buy your voice share and you're going to run into a similar problem where there's a reason why that market has the availability. Secondly, as I said a couple times, I use the word buyers. These are only buyer leads. And so us realtors want to find listings. That's what we're, that's really what we want is to sign listing agreements and list homes on the market. Not that we don't want to represent buyers also because we do and we want to do it well, but we want to secure listings. That's a big part of, of what we're doing. And that's really where we're going to expand our portfolio is as we can start listing homes and particularly luxury homes. And that's really where we can get established in our communities and our markets as local real estate agents, right? And so Zillow provides none of that. So these are only buyer leads predominantly. And that's not all bad. They're, they're leads. You know, it's good, but we're looking for listings. And so if you're looking for listings, just know that you're not really going to get that through this type of lead generating. These buyer leads are not vetted. So you have no idea when you answer the phone, they have no idea before they send the person to you. If they're pre-qualified, the unvetted leads that I was getting, many of them did not have a pre-qualification letter. Now we already know that that's not unusual. So we deal with a lot of people that reach out to us that we have to connect them with a lender. And so I'm not complaining about that. It's my job to do that. And I understand that. And I, I don't mind doing that. It's my pleasure to do it. I have lenders that I work with hand in hand closely. I got a whole playlist with a lender that I work with on this channel where we're going through the loan process. And so we're doing that to help consumers understand their need. I get all of that. But the point that I'm saying is that I got calls frequently from people who not only were not pre-qualified, they weren't in a position to buy at all at that point in time. And so I spent a lot of time coaching people up on what they need to know and how they need to position themselves to be ready to buy a home. I genuinely don't mind doing that. But what I am telling you is that's also not necessarily what I was paying to do for these leads. And you may not be interested in that at all. And I totally understand. You may need to make money today and every call you get needs to at least be vetted to some extent, okay? These buyers are not vetted out. And so you need to know that and be aware of it so you can factor it into your decision-making process. All right, so the next one's a big one. And I'm gonna say something that you need to ask your sales representative about because I never looked into this. So I don't even know what the answer is. But looking back on it and really thinking about it, it is concerning. So first of all, this is on a first come first serve basis. The leads are meaning that when someone clicks speak to an agent on the Zillow listing that they're looking at, Zillow is going to connect them to you. And if it's your turn in the rotation and obviously the more you buy out, the more voice share you get. So the more calls that they send to you, if you don't answer that call, when it comes, that lead is gone. Now, I'm not complaining about that. That I actually think that's fair and that's how it should be. We should answer our phones. As real estate agents, answering our phones is a big part of our business. So if you're too busy to answer your phone, you were too busy for that lead. And so it is what it is. The next agent should get that opportunity. I don't have a problem with that. I'm just saying that you need to know it. And there is a problem that's attached to that. And there's actually maybe two. So when these calls come in, you don't get the contact of the, the contact information of the lead until you answer and accept the call. Then it populates it. And so here's a little pro tip that I've got for you that I learned over eight months of doing this. Sometimes things happen. You can be the best realtor in America 
and yet things happen. Many of us have children and there's things going on that we get calls from multiple clients at the same time. There's an emergency. Like it doesn't mean that you're slacking on your job because you couldn't get to the phone immediately and field a call in that moment necessarily. And so whatever your reason may be, I got a little pro tip for you. When the lead comes in, it's going to say Zillow Premier Agent. If you That's how I save the number because it's a generic number they call from every time. So it's not the lead's contact. You need to, I just said that, make sure that you take note of that. The call is going to come in from a Zillow generic phone number. You can answer the phone. Then you have to accept the call. It's a little green check. So go ahead and click that. Then the lead's information will pop up after you've done that. What I would suggest is if their phone number is not on there, this isn't going to work because now you're going to have to email them and you'd rather be able to talk to them on the phone. But a lot of them are going to have their phone number in the, uh, they're going to put their phone number in the information when they're typing it in before the call actually comes to you. Screenshot the screen because when you answer the call and you click accept, it's going to basically open up in the app or through their website the information of the call. It's just going to show you who's calling, the name of the caller, their phone number, if they put it in, their email address, and the address of the property that they're looking at so you can look at all of it while you're talking to them. That's really convenient and cool. So I'd say that's a pro to the, the actual functionality of the programs, not bad, I would say. But tie that back to the pros. What I'm saying with this is screenshot that information if you can't take the call. Accept the call, screenshot it, and then hang up. You're not hanging up on them directly because actually in that moment, you still haven't been connected to them yet. They're still hearing Zillow. We're connecting you to an agent. So if you hang up, then you are connected with them and then you can shoot them a text or you can call them right back whenever you finish whatever that thing you're doing is. So you can at least secure the lead. That's a pro tip. And I don't think it's unethical in doing that. You're paying for these leads and you couldn't answer and field the call at that moment. The next thing that I want to tie to that is a problem that I found that you need to ask about when you get on your call with the Zillow um, Premier sales agent. Zillow would send me a notification and say, sorry, we missed you. And I wish I had a screenshot of one of these to show you, but I don't. But they say, sorry, we missed you. We'll try to connect with you on the next one. And my phone never rang. So I don't know what's causing this to happen. I don't know if it's a situation where the person, because sometimes people don't want to talk to people and they, they didn't realize what they were clicking. Maybe they clicked off uh, before the process actually even got started. And so it's like a bug in the system and Zillow still sends you that notification. I don't know what's causing that, but my phone literally never rang and it's saying, sorry, we missed you. And I'm mentioning this because this happened frequently. So if I was you and I was considering investing in this lead generating program, you need to ask your sales agent, was that part, was that counted against me in my part of the rotation? Because if it was, that's not fair. Like, I, how are you compensating for my money? What's causing that to happen? Because my phone never rang, seriously. And how do you fix this? Because I shouldn't be charged for that. I shouldn't be paying for that. I never actually got the lead that I paid for because the phone never rang. So you need to ask about that. I'm saying it multiple times because I, I want you to do that because you need to, because if it was me, I would have want somebody to have told me about this. So I could have asked because this is maybe 20 to 30 calls that this happened with. Who knows how much money that could have potentially been, right? And so that's my experience over an eight month trial run, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I am no longer paying for these leads through Zillow. I've, I've, I'm no longer doing it. Now, the good thing too, I guess would be another pro is it's month to month. So you can change your investment. If there's opportunity to increase it, you can increase, you can change zip codes, you can pull out completely. There's no contract. So I guess that's a positive too. And so for you, can I see benefit in doing it and taking that route? Yes, but you need to understand what you're getting into, how it works, a couple of tips that I've given you that you can kind of finesse and move around some of the pitfalls with their program. And hopefully all that will work out for you and whatever avenue you choose, hopefully you have much success in your career. I want to do this video to be a blessing and to be helpful to you guys. So hopefully it was. And if you thought that it was and you found this information helpful, please give the video a like because it helps us out, as you know, and to position us to continue putting out content like this. Also, if you want to stay up to date with things that we're doing on this channel for the future for real estate in South Carolina and beyond, such as this video would be, then subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications, all of that stuff. And in the meantime, I do wish y'all well, y'all take care, and we'll see you on the next one.